Hello everyone, my name is Tom, and can we talk about Craig the Creek? Like, can we talk about this show? Like, how crazy it's gotten? I don't even know how to say this anymore. Like, we've been saying, don't sleep on Craig of the Creek. But seriously, and I know I'm a hypocrite too, because I stopped paying attention for a while. I got so much to pay attention to in the realm of animation, and I was like, okay, Craig is just doing his thing in his creek. There's some plot threads starting, but they're just chilling. Let me look away for a second and... This is my creek now. What did I just come back to? No wonder y'all were yelling at me, sheesh. And no, I, I wasn't doing that as a meme, I'm just saying sheesh, that's a part of human language. Okay, so above all else, I need y'all to understand, Craig is now on top when it comes to being just an all-around amazing cartoon. Not trying to take away from all the other great cartoons on the air right now, because let's be honest, we have been eating, but Craig of the Creek has really used their slow and methodical world building to fill out into a ridiculous story. It feels almost like a self-contained MCU in a single Cartoon Network show. Capture the Flag straight up gave me like a smaller scale same feeling as watching Infinity War and Endgame, and when Deltron came in, ah, uh, nowhere, literal bars. But I don't want to make a video breaking down Capture the Flag, because that's not really my specialty. I want to focus more on what Capture the Flag accomplished, specifically thematically. I know, I know, this dude gonna preach about themes again, but listen, there's a common thread that stood out to me as the main story of Craig of the Creek developed and reached the climax of the other side arc that is both universally relatable and also symbolic of what Craig of the Creek the show in essence is. And that is the theme of growing up. And let me pull a cliche real quick. Craig of the Creek is a lot like Kids Next Door. I know there are always going to be people who get mad about comparisons like that, but you gotta recognize that these two shows are at the very least within the same genre of Kids Run the World cartoons. But the biggest difference between the two, I consider a massive strength for Craig of the Creek. Kids Next Door was not grounded to reality. It had a lot of really creative lore and rules, but it could get too out there sometimes. And it's one of those things where the more you think about things logistically, the less some things make sense. Craig of the Creek, however, is grounded to reality, with exceptions, but not with anything that breaks the world entirely or can't be explained by kids having a more dramatic perception of reality, which means they can't get too abstract the way that KND did. But it makes it easier to identify with and also makes it less reliant on a complex web of rules in order to function. One of the biggest examples to come to mind is how Kids Next Door had a very very hard line divides between kids and adults. It was more cynical when it came to the experience of being a kid and growing up, and there were times where I felt like that was a limiting factor in exploring what they wanted to, like Nigel's relationship with his dad. I don't hate the storyline at all of his dad being a former operative in the KND, in fact one of the best of all time, but the fact that's what it took for them to connect and make Nigel realize he's more like his old man than he thinks is a testament to how much that hard and fast rule could restrain the story from its goals. Comparing it to Craig, where there are generational divides between kids and older characters, not because that's a law of the world, but because that's a natural part of life. And since that's not treated as black and white, the relationships between the characters of different ages have more room for there to be a journey rather than just a single epiphany. Craig and Bernard, for example, are able to both butt heads and have bonding moments to evolve gradually over time, both as individuals and as brothers. And stuff like this naturally makes growing up an important part of how the story progresses. But also, growing up isn't the focus of the show. The focus is to celebrate being a kid, as it has been since the beginning. Growing up just happens to be a big part of being a kid. It's the elephant in the room of childhood childhood that feels like it's far away, and next thing you know, you're an adult who thinks way too hard about shows on Cartoon Network. But that's actually what I want to touch on specifically, and how growing up is handled in regards to the current plot. The plot is centered around the way that King Xavier is using his resources as a way to occupy the other side of the creek and expand his empire. And as a monarch, Xavier is part of the royal lineage that dates back through his older sister and up to his older brother Kenneth, the original king of the creek. And Kenneth's entire character is that he's a very likable and ultra person. He was originally friends with the elders, and as nerdy kids, they fell in love with an in-universe anime, Haru the King of the Forest, who he dressed up as purely out of geeky passion for his favorite anime. But when the overpass was built in the middle of the creek, the construction cut him off from his friends, and he was forced to make new friends, who had enough admiration for his kindness and taste, to name him King Kenneth. Then over time, that subculture within the creek evolved into what it is today, with his spoiled younger brother Xavier riding the reputation Kenneth brought upon the position of king. And the show 
spoke with Pass when Camp said, My friends gave me that crown, but knowing Xavier, that crown is the only reason he has friends. Which tells us a lot about Xavier. Growing up in the shadow of his brother, he was probably treated a certain way because kids knew that once he came to power, it would be in their best interest to be his friend. The ability for Xavier to make genuine friends or believe that anyone would want to be his friend for him would be next to impossible. And that's what would teach him to view friendships as the transactional system that his kingdom functions under. As much as the story really does set you up to see Kenneth as a great person and Xavier as a tyrant, and as much as both of those things are true, the show doesn't directly explore how much more advantageous an environment Kenneth would have had to be a good person, to make friends who had no reason to like him other than by the merits of who he is, compared to Xavier, where it's in a kid's best interest to befriend him. And even though that's not explored beyond that single line, Kenneth's words still send a feeling to the pit of your stomach. You feel, even if it's just in that moment, the same pity that Kenneth feels towards his little bro. When the middle child, Cheyenne, passed down the crown to Xavier, we saw the circumstances that led to a new king, death of your childhood. Cheyenne and her best friend passed down their mantle to Xavier and Maya once they were in high school and too old to be playing in the creek. And it's actually very similar to Kids Next Door, where once operatives reach a certain age, it's standard procedure to decommission them and send them off into their teenage years. And this practice is coming from the same concept, but again, using a very real-world system to execute instead of an in-world rule. And that real-world system is peer pressure. Once you reach a certain age, you're expected to leave behind things that are deemed child even if those things are things that you still enjoy and see purpose in. Cheyenne and her best friend Randy were an example of kids eager to let those things go and jump into the next chapter of their life. And you can also see this in Bernard throughout the series, always trying to live up to the idea he has of growing up. And then you look at someone like the old green poncho, Michelle, who's a bit different. She clearly still had an emotional attachment to the creek, her friend Omar, and her position. But Xavier uses the threat of peer pressure, the humiliation of being exposed as a high schooler, large in the woods to banish her from the creek. And I don't know if me just describing this is giving off a vibe that I'm either in favor of or opposed to teenagers leaving kids stuff behind, so I'll come right out and say I think it has a lot of downsides, but offers a long-term net benefit. Just look at the elders of the creek compared to Michelle or Kenneth who could have easily ended up on the same path as them. Michelle and Kenneth are definitely way more well-adjusted than the elders because they were pushed to grow up and have necessary formative experiences that taught them what the creek couldn't. But in both cases, even if they were pressured into rejecting their childish ways in the short term, they still maintain the ability to appreciate those things as they get older. Michelle still went back to help Omar during the capture of the flag game because even though she has moved on and is living out her teenage years, the creek didn't go anywhere. She can still go back as a teen and appreciate it for what it is and understand how she now fits in, while also growing up and spending her time doing what teenagers do loitering. And even Kenneth, who seems way too busy to even think about doing that stuff, talked about Haru with such a warm tone. So that feels like it's something that he hasn't lost touch with. Because that's also part of growing up, is realizing how many of the things you grew out of actually never stopped being important to you. Once most people start to enter adulthood, they stop caring about the appearance of maturity and try to find whatever joy they can in the mundane responsibilities of being a productive member of society. Myself and many others, probably including many of you, get comments about being grown adults who still care about animation when animated shows are supposed to be for kids. What's wrong with you? Why don't you grow up? And I know somebody will watch this video and say, why is this grown man looking so deep at a Cartoon Network show? And you know why? Because when you grow up, you realize the world is a depressing and bleak place. You're always busy, you're always stressed out, and maybe the things that bring you joy are the same things that brought you joy when you were younger. Maybe you can go watch Spongebob or Regular Show or Adventure Time, and it makes you feel something positive when nothing else does. And I honestly find it more sad to be a grown adult so obsessed with living up to some mold of maturity that you deprive yourself of something you love. Like, dude, I had to pay $40 to renew my license last week. If I want to watch some cartoons, I'm gonna watch cartoons. And that's something I really appreciate about Bernard's character, is even as he does all of these things as a teenager to present himself as a mature adult, he can't ignore a lot of the childish desires he still has. And funnily enough, the more he accepts those parts of himself, the more grown up he feels. Let's look at the Snow Day episode as an example. Bernard went from cynically dismissing Craig's optimism for a snow day 
Friday, to opening up to Craig about the source of that cynicism. The years of hoping for snow days that never came. And then once there actually was a snow day, he broke his character of acting mature and grown up to let himself show his genuine childlike joy for a dream come true. And in that moment, he didn't care about convincing anyone of anything or portraying himself as grown up, he was just living in the moment as his most honest self. Which is one of the most genuine signs of maturity, just not caring what other people think. But most of the main cast isn't at that point yet. They're in the prime of their childhood and have no pressure to reject that. Only a hope to hold on to it for as long as they can. Omar took a step back from it for a while, but he not only came back, but he's also older than Craig and a lot of the other kids. So it's natural that he'd start to grow out of the creek, or at least question his role in the creek at this point. Which is actually the important part of growing up. Asking yourself where you fit into the world, and understanding that your place will change as you evolve into a new person. For example, the elders of the creek are definitely a bit socially stunted from the fact they seem to have never left the creek, but as they got older, they changed their role within the community to avoid the how do you do fellow kids look. And a tricky part about this topic is to acknowledge there is a line where enjoying the things you did when you were younger and staying in those spaces can become kind of yikes, and not in the LMAO cringe type of way, but like a genuine concern about why this grown adult wants to be in a social circle of children. But the elders are their own group within the creek and their own circle of social dynamics and are able to mingle with younger circles in a way that acknowledges the power dynamics and knowledge gaps between them in a considerate and healthy way. They didn't leave the creek but they also didn't resist their growth and what it meant for their role in that environment. That's what matters. The same way that Kenneth went from the kid with the cool costume to becoming a leader, and then passing that role down to his sister, who passed it down to Xavier, who all saw their roles change from just another kid to king. And now Craig is going through that same evolution. Though he's not at the point where it's time for him to leave the creek, he has grown up being just another kid who's happy to go along with whatever the creek throws at him. He's old enough now to appreciate that freedom but understand why there needs to be some order, and why he's the best person to take up the responsibility, something that contradicts his previous stated values. A contradiction that's happening because he's not the same kid anymore. He doesn't have the same perspective, and he's become a new person even without a crown to signify that. Capture the Flag really brought forward the parallel between Craig and Xavier, but the truth is Xavier only ever changed cosmetically. He wasn't challenged the same way as other characters, and because of that he didn't have to change and grow the way we see Craig change in the special. For that, Xavier is honestly a really tragic character. With all the power he had, every opportunity he has for humility or self-reflection is cut out from under him by his ability to remove any obstacle at the wave of his hand. And maybe if that wasn't the case, he would be more like his older brother, but instead his empire would fall to Craig of the Creek, a kid who did have the opportunities to be humbled, challenged, and overcome to grow into the leader the Creek needs. But that's about all I gotta say. My name is Tom, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, or find me across the web at TommyPQ. QM, and the Roundtable at Roundtable Vids. Of course, you can show your support by liking this video, share it with your friends, and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for more Craig of the Creek content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!